Hi Tramps! If you've got a Behringer mixer, like this one or actually many other models, and you've noticed that certain funny things are happening with the signal lights constantly being illuminated despite having no signal on there, or your VU meters just showing total signal, they're all lit, or the VU meters not working at all, or you've had distortion but only on some of the more sensitive uh, channels like the mic channel, uh, and this problem seems to go away as the mixer warms up after a few minutes, odds are you're dealing with a problem with the power supply capacitors. It's probably the power supply capacitors that have failed. And I'm going to show you how you fix this. Uh, before I do though, disclaimer, the, we are going to be working on the mains uh, processing parts of this circuit, the mains voltage, so it's absolutely essential that uh, you do two things. One, you unplug it, and two, you ensure that the capacitors are fully discharged, otherwise you can get a nasty main shock. And don't go doing this to a mixer that's in warranty, because Behringer will fix this for you if your mixer is in warranty. I think typically it's about two years. Um, but in my case, I have modded the ever-loving crap out of this mixer, and it's well outside warranty. And actually, these types of faults tend to develop in mixers that are sort of three-plus years old. Um, so I'll show you how to fix it. Just a reminder of how you get into this particular model. This model is the Behringer Pro DX2000 USB. Uh, I've taken most of the screws off because there's no point in you watching me unscrew things. But first thing to do is you've got side panels here. Excuse the camera wobble. Side panels here. What you need to do to take the um, side panels off is you go around and you unscrew all of these screws. I've actually replaced mine with slightly more robust um, hex M3 uh, screws, uh, M3 bolts, just because the other ones were just a bit too soft and getting chewed up. Um, so you do that to that side, the side panel comes off. Uh, the same on the other side, done this for you. You know, that comes off. And then uh, you need to upend the mixer, and you'll find that there are three screws at the back here. Three, li three little bolts at the back here. Uh, one, two, and three, so I've left the middle one in, so we'll just undo this one now. Um, and then the other thing you need to do once you've got your back panel unscrewed, I'm just going to be quite careful here because I don't want this thing to bend. It is made out of sheet metal after all. Is on the underside, you will find the last few screws that you'll need to unscrew to get in there. It's, it's these three here, one, two, and three. You don't need to touch these. You don't need to touch the um, earthing points. You will need to touch these in a moment, but we won't do that for the moment. Um, so let's just take that last one off, and then the mixer should open up like a lovely clamshell. The faders are up here, so just to show you, that's the top, yeah? Uh, and we're going to rotate that round there so what was at the front of the mixer is now at the top what was at the back of the mixer is or the top the the, the back front panel of the mixer is down here uh, this here is the rear panel um, and so what you've got is you've got sort of four there's actually five PCBs there but three ones to really care about you've got the uh, input output panel here around the back so this here is where the uh, inputs and outputs are, so your audio in, audio out. Um, you've got the board here, which is your uh, EQ and fader board. These things here are your slide faders. You can see that the stereo ones are fatter than the mono ones. The mono ones are on channel one and two. Um, these are my little micro switches. Can you even see that? You can't really, but I've got little micro switches that I've put in there for extra mic muting. Um, so that's your, uh, and this has got all your EQ knobs and everything on there and various buttons, your pre-fade to listen buttons. Uh, and then this is sort of the master mixing board. Um, this board here show, has got your VU meters on it, your crossfader, boost, and dip, uh, headphone volume control, FX send, and various things like that. Uh, this tiny little board, can you see that? I don't know if you can. Uh, let's just give you a better view of that. That tiny little board up there is your... Uh, crossfader, so that's your crossfader there, it's an optical crossfader. Um, this board here is your uh, headphone out, tiny board there. Um, this cable here 
is the troublesome ribbon cable that I previously showed you how to fix. I've completely replaced mine and I had to put a new set of headers in to do that and that cured the missing uh, right channel problem that I had. And finally this little board here is your uh, USB input um, board so that comes in on one of the channels, channel 7 I think, oh, did it, oh no it's channel 3 isn't it? Uh, it comes in as one of your optional inputs. Um, the problem that you're going to be facing uh, if, you, if you are having these symptoms actually lies down here. Uh, let's just move this forward so you can see that. So the problem is in the power section. That's this bit here. Now the power section does what it says on the tin. It converts the mains voltage that comes in the back to a low voltage to use on all these boards. And um, because this is uh, a piece of audio equipment, it's got lots of components called operational amplifiers in. And op operational amplifiers, generally speaking, like to have two voltages, a plus and a minus, as well as a ground in the middle. So this power supply is responsible for outputting a plus of voltage and a minus voltage. I think it's 14 volts. Don't quote me on that. Uh, but I think it's four, plus 14 volts and minus 14 volts. And um, it's got, if we look at it end on like that, it's got this uh, four pin connector there, which I think has got your, it's got a ground and your plus minus voltages. This little connector here is 14 volts that goes up to the little lamp that you can attach to the top. And it's what I've used to, I've tapped that to go and uh, attach various bits and pieces. Now this is rocking around because I've previously had it loose. Um, can't stress enough, you do not want to be touching anything in there. Uh, if this is still plugged into the mains because you will get a shock and if you've unplugged it from the mains just beware that uh, there can still be charge in some of the capacitors uh, on the high voltage side and that can still shock you so what I usually advise people do is they keep the um, switch on they unplug it and then the internal circuitry would drain the capacitor but some other models of the Behringer mixers will still have caps that hold charge even if you have unplugged it. So just be careful, okay? You need to leave it for a few hours if you're not sure that those caps discharge. So the problem that you will find if, if these are your symptoms uh, is to do with these capacitors here. I've actually already replaced these, but I want to show you what I, what I found. Um, first of all, uh, what, what I did is I opened the mixer up like this and I noticed that there were these capacitors sitting here, but uh, what jumped out at me was the top of them. I show you. Don't know if you can see if I hold it against black. Can you see the top of them is bulging? And these were situated here in the output part of the power supply. They were just sort of there and there. One was on the minus voltage side, one was on the plus voltage side. And uh, that made me think maybe that's the failed component. Um, I was suspicious of it being caps because there was this warm-up effect. Once the mixer had warmed up, it sort of started behaving a bit. So what I did is I took this out and I wanted to measure these uh, to see if they were still good. Whenever you see leaking or bulging capacitors, uh, it's usually these electrolytic ones, these aluminium cans, as they're called. They, they are well known to fail after a while. And whenever you see a bulge on the top like that, or you see stuff leaking out the top or the bottom, that's a surefire sign that they're, they're knackered and they need replacing. And a lot of audio gear enthusiasts will actually systematically go around the whole boards of their audio gear and replace all of these every 10, 20 years because they are so well known to slowly dry out over time. There are things that can cause these uh, to dry out and get damaged sooner. Uh, the main one being heat, but also shock can do it as well. Um, and we will see in a second why these two particular ones failed. I did also have a look at what lots of the other capacitors that I could see, and actually none of them were showing any signs of bulging or leaking. So this is how you get your power supply out. On the bottom, you've got these two screws here, and that's what anchors the power supply enclosure to the uh, metal box. Uh, they're crossheads. So we'll just undo these. As I said, I, I've just left them a bit loose because I was um, doing this earlier and I thought, you know what, I'll do a video about this because this is such a common mode of failure where a Behringer mixer starts having signal lights constantly on or VU lights on and VU lights not lighting or 
distorted sound and I've seen a lot of mi people throw their mixers away because of this um, and go and buy another 200 300 pounds Behringer mixer to replace it when actually with a bit of surgery you can you can get the thing back into working order uh, it's got little tabs there because this is a grounded enclosure you slide it out and there you are there's your there's your power supply free ready to be probed further right so to take it out of its box, um, it, I don't know what they were on when they designed this box. Um, this, this, this enclosure has got two functions. One function is to dump the heat that is produced by some of the components. And a second function is to uh, protect the, well, protect you in case you stick your stray fingers in it. And um, to give some sort of rudimentary screening to stop some of the... Um, RF signals, the high frequency signals that are used in power supplies uh, from bleeding into the audio electronics. Um, so if you want to get into this, uh, it's in about three parts, more screws to undo and come here, you sod. So we'll pop that off. Now I just want to point out to those of you who are slightly astute, you can see that there's a load of LX tape electrician's tape that I've put over some of these places and also in there. Um, I'm, I'm always paranoid about safety so what I do if I've got a circuit that I know I'm going to have to power up at some point with open I will cover every single thing that might be at mains voltage that I could inadvertently touch. Um, but you know I, you can do this job and test it all uh, well you can do this job and fire it up without actually needing to run it live open uh, it's only if you want to probe it with multimeters and something that you that you'll need to do that um, I recommend against it I think this is such a straightforward fix um, if, even if it t ends up not being the problem with your mixer it's not going to hurt as I say audio engineers very frequently will take their mixers apart and replace all the caps in it anyway right so you've got this this is obviously this is this tells me that this circuit has been hacked and has been modified from when it was originally designed because you've got this bizarre shell and then they've gone and had to put this thing in which looks to me like they needed to put a bit of um, extra isolation um, but separation between the high voltage components and the low voltage components they came up with that okay interesting uh, underneath here are just a couple of inductors which do have um, exposed terminals so I covered them over um, now, this, these are where the culprit components sat. Can you see this okay, by the way? Yeah, fine. So I, I had my capacitors, the original capacitors, sitting here, um, and uh, here and here. And I remember I said that the, typically these uh, power supplies have two voltages in audio equipment, a positive and a negative. You've got a couple of switching transistors here. One is a positive voltage one, and one is a negative voltage one. It's the way around. And they are um, connected to the, this, this metal base uh, because this metal base is acting like a heat sink to dump heat. Underneath here is also a, um, a component of the switch mode power supply that also runs a bit on the hot side. So that's got this ridiculous clip connected to a insulating, a electrically insulating thermally coupling cover. Uh, and this acts as a heat sink for it. But yeah. Anyway, to get the circuit out, you're going to need to be undoing all of these screws uh, and then this circuit will slide out. That's the circuit. It's got a uh, sheet here which isolates the circuit from the metal base. So this is just basically acting as an insulator so the pins don't short out to it. Um, you've got here, bring this closer, they are your uh, thermal pads that you can see. Um, they're covered in thermal compounds. They keep those power transistors cool. And uh, I've 
the, the, the other component that I took this sleeve off is this one. It's to do with um, power switching. Okay, so if we just uh, have a look a bit more closely at this, you can see the problem. On the board here, there is, uh, let's get a pointy stick. Looking at the underside of this board, these were the two capacitors that I've replaced that originally failed. But if you look here, there is a lot of, uh, there's a lot of charring. The, the, the PCB is obviously showing signs of, of heat damage there. And the underlying problem is actually here. It's these two, and if you can see that, it's these two resistors. Now these are um, current limiting uh, on the two power lines, the positive and negative voltage, and um, they, they're getting quite hot. Uh, they look to me like they're, what, between one and two watt resistors but there's nothing to dissipate the heat. So what's happening is the heat's being conducted down the component legs, going on to uh, the PCB, and it's being transmitted to the next door components, which happen to be these capacitors. That's caused them to be constantly heated, and that's why the, constant, the insides have expanded and the electrolytic fluid in there has essentially evaporated off. So I think this is the cause of the failure. So while they've gone to, Behringer has gone to great lengths to properly heat sink these components, these transistors that are well known to get hot, they've then gone and put some components there sandwiched in between other components that also get hot. Um, and the result is, charred the PCB, heated up these next door components, and they've caused the capacitor to fail. Now how do I know these have failed? Well, we can measure them. And their job, they, these are smoothing capacitors, their job is to smooth out the uh, ripples in the voltage uh, so that the op amps see a nice smooth DC voltage. In the uh, switch mode power supply, what happens is everything operates at really high frequency and there's a control circuit that rapidly switch pulses on and off um, current through a transformer according to the voltage output at these um, pins and what it does is it uses a bit of feedback through a, a an optocoupler where I've got my thumb there to detect that enough the correct uh, output is going through and, and if, if the output's dropping a bit low it pulses it a bit more and this is done at a really high frequency uh, way higher than the mains hum of, of 50 or 60 hertz um, and then what happens is uh, on the low voltage side of the transformer uh, the uh, there is filtering that's done to filter out these very high frequency, you know, in the megahertz or hundreds of kilohertz switching so that you get a nice smooth DC. Uh, one of the ways that you can filter is using uh, what's called an RC filter. Um, so that's a resistor and a capacitor. Um, what basically happens is the capacitor um, conducts the, the ripple, but it block, blocks DC. Uh, and vice versa for the resistor. It's not the only way to do it. Uh, there are things called LC filters, which are coils, uh, inductors with capacitors, and they're generally, LC filters have an advantage in that they don't heat up nearly as much, they don't dissipate as much energy. And for a power supply, if I were designing this, I would prefer to use an LC filter where possible. So if we get an LC meter, which allows us to see the capacitance, um, this is my trusty LC meter, and I dial it around to capacitance, and I connect up the... Can you see that all right? Yeah, that's lovely. And I connect this up. Now, we should be reading a 1,000 microfarads, shouldn't we? It's reading 8. So this thing is pretty dry. This is clearly well, well below its rating. When a capacitor is only operating at 1%, it's not going to be very effective at conducting lower frequency noise. So in other words, this sucks. is going to suck as a filter. And what's happening is these ripples are not being filtered out by the, by the broken capacitors. They're getting out onto the voltage lines. They're upsetting the op amps, um, causing the op amps to think they're undervolted, which is why they then start making distorted sounds. But it's also... Uh, on the signal lights, the signal lights have got a little circuit that detects uh, an alternating current, a higher frequency alternating current. Uh, and they're not very smart, those circuits, because their only job is to show you when there's sound there. 
so they've not got very good filtering on. So they're detecting the high frequency ripple that's now making it through and they're thinking, oh, there's signal there. I'm probing the output of the positive volt rail without uh, before we've come to the filter circuiting circuitry. So it's just before we get to the capacitor and resistor. And if you look at my multimeter, what I've got this is I've got this set to 500 millivolt um, range. I've got an AC couple and I've just moved it off the origin so you can see it. And uh, essentially you've got all this noise, this high frequency noise. I'm at 400 microseconds here, so it is very high frequency noise there. Um, and that's what, if your cap capacitor's not working, that's what's coming through to the rest of the circuitry and causing problems. So you can fix this temporarily by um, unsoldering, so desoldering the capacitors there and there. Um, and that will do, you know, that will do the job. I've only, I only had 330 microfarad capacitors. That's all I had at the time. So I replaced those and actually the mixer was back to working order, which is great. But always worth asking the question, why did something fail? We haven't, and we know that it's, it's heat related and we haven't cured that because we've still got these resistors in situ. So this is where, I, this is my recommended fix. What you need to do is you need to pick up some replacement capacitors. Now I've gone for... Uh, 1000 microfarad, can you see that? 1000 microfarad, 35 volt, because I always like to go over spec. Um, if I'm going to the trouble to rip a whole mixer apart, hell, I don't mind paying an extra 50p for a slightly over spec cap that's going to be less likely to fail. Uh, and Nichichon are a well known brand, particularly good for audio devices. So, uh, First part of the fix is to replace the broken capacitors with fresh ones. And then the second part of the fix is to sort out the underlying problem, which is that these resistors are getting too hot. And so I've picked up these. These resistors uh, down here are, are 330 ohms. Um, so what I've done is I've picked up 5 watt 330 ohm resistors. So these are resistors that are designed to take a joke. These are designed to uh, deal with heat. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to desolder these two resistors and I'm going to put these in place and I will try and couple them somehow to the heat sink. Now space is really tight down there. You'll notice that I've got capacitors 11 and 15 that are pretty much in the way. So I'm probably going to have to leave the legs on a bit on the long side and what I'll do is I'll do a trick with some uh, PTFE sleeve to insulate the legs. Um, and this should sort the problem out. This will mean that all the heat is going to be radiated from these blocks and I will push them up against the, uh, the, the shell. And uh, it will keep it away from the PCB so my new capacitors there will be nice and protected. So let's get soldering. I'm not afraid of